You ever heard that old phrase, if you build it, they will come? Well, in 2017 and beyond, that's not necessarily the case anymore. In fact, nowadays, if you build it, they probably still won't come. And here's why. Whether you're a YouTuber looking to grow your YouTube channel, a social media influencer, a business trying to attract more customers, a preacher with a message to preach looking for an audience, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is that we live in what Seth Godin in his book, The Purple Cow, calls the post-consumer era. Whereas before, we were able to be enticed by new and shiny objects and things that we want or things that marketers convinced us that we needed for our house or for our lives. Nowadays, especially if you're an American, in most cases, you pretty much have everything you need. And in a lot of cases, you have everything you want. So in order to get people's attention, in order to win sales, get subscribers, get people following you as a social media influencer, get people rallied around your message, whatever you're making, selling, speaking, doing, needs to be what Seth Godin calls a purple cow. It needs to stand out. And unfortunately, what most people are doing looks exactly like what every other single person is doing. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have a successful vlog or blog or website or business because there's other, there's thousands of other people that are already doing it. No, what I'm saying is whatever it is that you create has to have a remarkable quality to it that draws people to come check it out. When I started doing this series on personality types I know that I have a unique perspective as a person I you know one of the phrases I use to describe myself is I've lived a lot of life in very few years you know, with combat experience as a leader a leader in a fortune 500 company you know a lot of different things that I've done having children getting married very young compared to what most people do nowadays having children fairly young having a lot of the mentors that I had that most people don't have access to so when I started doing commentary on personality types and my experiences, I knew that would be interesting and different from kind of the textbooky way, black and white way that a lot of people like to look at that. When I invited people to consider, not necessarily to believe, because I don't know if it's 100% right, when I invited people to consider that maybe everything we've learned about personality types is not so black and white. And I think scientists would agree with that as well. It's interesting to people. When Ty Lopez, for example, did his here in my garage, just bought this Lamborghini. It's awesome. But you know what I like more than that? Books. Now, what person in their right mind, and this is why it was remarkable, what person in their right mind is going to show you a picture of a Lamborghini? And they'd be like, but you know what I like more than driving this Lamborghini around? Read books. Really? You enjoy that. You enjoy reading books more than driving a Lamborghini. But the interesting thing about him, as you get to know him, is there's truth in that. As he attributes a lot of his success to the books that he's read and the mentors that he's able he's been able to acquire over the course of his life. But no matter how you slice it, whether he's being honest or not, and I believe he is, that video was remarkable because most people doing a Lamborghini video don't stop it to start talking about reading books and getting mentors. You know, they keep it more real housewives. Like, here's my Lamborghini. Watch me drive it down the street with all these naked ladies in it. You know what I mean? Like, it's he did something that stood out. You know? So you have to figure out what is it about you that's unique and remarkable? What makes you different from the other thousand people trying to do the same thing you're trying to do or trying to talk about the same thing that you're trying to talk about? What's gonna make you stand out? That's what you really have to get to. Because if your product or your message or your fill in the blank that you're trying to get so many people to pay attention to, if it looks like what everybody else is already doing, it's not gonna get anybody's attention. And most people think that's actually a good idea. Let me just take what this highly successful person did, copy exactly what they did, and I'll be successful too. Well, there's truth in you copying their formula copying their system, 
but not copying their content or their context. You can't just be a Xerox copy of somebody else because now people are more bombarded with information and advertisements than they've ever been in their life. What's going to make them pay attention to you? What unique skill or perspective do you bring to the table? Not a lot of people giving personality type discussions who have combat leadership, who observed, you know, Jocko Willink says that war is just life amplified. I agree with that 100%. You know, you get to really see personalities when bullets are flying at you, when people are shooting RPGs or artillery at you. You get to see people's real personality types come out. And so not a lot of people can compete with me in that space. But you have to figure out what's going to help you be competitive, what's going to make you stand out. And this goes for, this isn't just about YouTube or business or marketing. This also goes for relationships. That young lady or that young man whose eye you're trying to catch, what makes you better than the other 5,000 people that are trying to get his or her attention? What makes you stand out? What's unique? You're trying to go get a job at a company? What makes you better than the other applicants? What do you bring to the table? And it can't just be, you know, the stuff on your resume. That stuff's cool. Let me tell you right now, in all my years of hiring people, the resume, with me, you might as well not even send me a resume. <laughs> because I want to talk to you. Right? I, I based my hiring decisions on the interviews and how they conducted themselves. And what when I, I have specific questions that I ask when I interview that reveal things to me that standard interview questions like here's a problem how would you solve it or what's tell me about one of your weaknesses and then the person does the cliche well you know one of my weaknesses is that i'm so good at everything i do that it's like they try to turn their weakness into a strength all that cliche nonsense so it's got to be more than just what's on your resume it's got to be what makes you stand out what makes your unique perspective stand out what is that thing that makes you a purple cow? I hope you got a lot out of today's discussion. As always, be sure to do the unselfish thing and share this with three people who you know will get something good out of it. If you didn't like this video, don't subscribe. Don't do that because I don't want to waste your time. If you thought it was dope, subscribe because more dopeness is on the way every single day here on the Daily Bravo, or at least Monday through Friday. We do other content on Saturday and Sunday. And as always, my friends, I love you very much. Remember that we are stronger than I, and I'll see you tomorrow.